Bring me down just a little bit more. Hallelujah. God is so good. Did you enjoy your Christmas? Yeah. You ate good? Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, I was talking to a couple of the little kids. They were like, yeah. They said, God was good. I said, praise the Lord. I said, did you get a, a new attitude for, under that tree? <laughs> I said, they said, no, no, I didn't get that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. But God is definitely good. Make sure uh, you continue to pray for the rest of the church. We do have people out sick. Uh, uh, they're just battling different issues, some with COVID, some with this, some with that. Some that have not been uh, back to this church are battling with some issues. So we need to pray for those folks. And um, just different uh, ailments. Some have sinus infections, flu. All that stuff is still going on besides the, the COVID. Uh, so we need to pray for our all those folks. Also continue to pray for Pastor Alvarez. Uh, uh, so far, you know, when my phone doesn't ring, how many know no news is good news? So every day that we don't get no news, I'm hoping that he's getting better, right? So that I don't want my phone to ring. I don't want them to call me because I, I know it might be bad news. So, so far, so good. So just keep, don't stop praying for him. And Sister Dora, his wife, is very, very appreciative of all of your prayers. She really is. So please uh, keep him in prayers. Uh, hopefully he begins to recover and he can get back to his family. And, and, and once he gets back to his family, how many last priority? Get back to your family. And then after that, you know, he gets strong, get his strength back, get back on his feet, and he can get back to running the fellowship. Right? Praise uh, the Lord. Well, um, I know we made all the announcements concerning our schedule for this week and I hope you you got the schedule I hope you got the announcements because after right at the service people will be asking me hey what's going on you not hear the announcements hallelujah so make sure you know don't come over here if there's nothing going on um, this week on certain things so praise the Lord well let's get into the word of God Philippians chapter 3 I want to continue on I, I admit, just talked a little bit about this on Sunday uh right before Christmas, and now that we're going into the new year, it's very important that we do certain things. Uh, let's pray first. Father, I ask you, God, and your anointing will accompany me this morning. I pray, God, that I decrease and you increase, that you receive all the honor, all the glory, and all of the praise. And in the mighty name of Jesus, the church together, we pray and we say amen and amen. Out of the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 12 through 16, and I'm going to talk about, there it is, fresh beginnings. And that's exactly what happens when a new year, when an old year begins to ride itself out, then a new year comes. But this morning, I'm not talking about a new year's resolution because those probably only last 24 hours anyway, right? You know, we make a resolution, man, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to do this. Next couple of days, man, you're back to eating again, you broke it. So we're not talking about a new year's resolution. What we're talking about is a fresh beginning, and I don't know about you, I can use a fresh beginning this year. That's a blessing about an old, a old year beginning to end and then a new year coming in. That you're able to say, you know what, I, I'm just going to get a fresh, fresh start uh, in my relationship with God. So out of the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 12 through 16, I'm going to read this. He says, not that I already attained, already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus also laid hold of me. Verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, therefore let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. So one thing that we need to do as we get into the, to, to the new year, and Paul begins to talk about this in these scriptures. We already know he's speaking to the Philippian church. They're a great group of people. They love God. They're a great church. But now he begins to let them know about certain things that he's doing that they can do to move on. One thing that we need to start to recognize, and those that are a little bit older, you know you've already recognized this, is we need to start recognizing the value of time. Because time goes fast. Time doesn't wait for anybody. And 
one thing that you need to do, and I know I need to do this, as the new year comes upon me, that I need to value my time. Because how many know throughout the year, how many are guilty that we wasted some time? Come on now, let's be real, right? And a lot of time has been spent indoors. How many know we weren't able to do a lot of things this year? We weren't able to, the normal things that we do in life. We, you know, like going, going out, going to the movies, going to eat, or meeting people, or fellowshipping, or all these normal things of life have really have been brought to a place that we can't do it as often as we were before. Even in the church, you know, those were times that we lost months shut down. We lost months of activity at the church. You might be thinking, well, we were able to do live stream. That's fine. But we weren't able to do the other activities involved to build the ministry. And this is why we are where we're at right now. We're in a state of recovery. We're trying to recover uh, all those that belong to the church. But now what has happened, because all, we lost a lot of time, not our own fault, but we did lose a lot of time that we were uh, start working the harvest field. You know, working with people, planting seed, you know, and all that other good stuff. Spiritually speaking, all the evangelism that we do, you know, all these things, we couldn't do those things. And this is why we are at where we're at today. But now we have to go into this new year and we have to recognize how valuable time is. And that we make a, a, a choice today and we make a priority. Because when Paul was speaking in that scripture, how many know Paul did a lot of other things? He was a tent maker. He did other things in his life. But he says, but this one thing I do, you know, forgetting those things which are behind and pressing forward. So what he was saying is, this is my number one priority. He didn't say all those other things were fine, but his number one priority was reaching towards the goal and becoming what God wanted him to be. And, and you got to think about that because I really believe that all of us, we're hampered by this situation all this year. I believe that some of us, if you're honest in your relationship with God, we're not talking about backsliding and doing crazy stuff, but I believe some of us regress in some things. Can you say amen? So now we need to recognize the value of time, how easy things can change in 24 hours. From one day to the next, how things can just, just totally be flipped upside down. So I really believe that we have to start really taking value of our time. Because I think we take time for granted. You know, every day, God writes you a check. Did you know that? Not a physical check, because you're probably going, where's my money at? No, God ain't going to give you no stimulus. Uncle Sam's going to give you stimulus. Amen. But every day, spiritually speaking, God gives, writes you a check. And he deposits 24 hours of life into your account. So the question is, as you look at your check register, what have we done with the time that God has given us? And if you are honest, you can honestly say, I can honestly say this, that throughout the whole year of 2020, I spent a lot of time watching movies. Come on, no, I like you ain't got Netflix or whatever else you guys got. And I really believe that there was probably times that you probably could have spent more time in your relationship with God, if we're honest, right? Let's be honest today. I'm not talking about being a super Christian. I'm talking about recognizing the value of time. And time is the only commodity that cannot be recycled. You can recycle everything else. You can't recycle time. Once it's gone, it's gone. Once the hair is gone, it's gone. It ain't coming back. I don't care what you buy. I don't care if it's roll game, his game, her game, whatever you want to buy. It ain't coming back. That's how time is. But one thing that we can do because of modern technology, how many of we can uh, capture time? How many ever look at pictures of themselves 20 years ago? And it's bad when people look at it and say, hey, who is that? And they look at you. Time. See, time didn't wait for you. We all age. Say amen, someone. Time does not wait. Time is continually moving. That's what you, we got to understand, folks. Time is continually moving. 
It just going and never ever stops. And one thing is if when you're you know when you're like 18, 19, you're not even worried about time. You, you got all the time in the world. But when you start getting 40, 41, 45, 50, 60, 70, you start valuing your time. So here's really what Paul begins, uh, one of the themes that he begins to elaborate on is priori- prior- being God being priority in our life. And that's why he says that one thing I do. And I mean, like I mentioned earlier, he did a bunch of other things. But he's talking about one thing that he had priority in is what he was going to seek God and reach towards the goal of his high calling in Christ Jesus. Now, this is a man that's already wrote 13 letters in the Bible, great missionary work, planted churches all over in the New Testament. In the New Testament, you see all the church plants. But yet, he is still valuing the time he has left. So I think really we need to recognize the value of our time. Because we could use the excuse, like many have done, oh, it's the COVID. That's why I can't do nothing in my relationship with God. I got news for you, and, and, and I'm very tired of hearing that excuse from many people, not just in our church, I'm talking about in general. You talk to people, and it's always, you know, the church, the church, the church, and all this other stuff. And I think, and I look, I um, talk to people that, you know what I mean? I'm like, but you still value your time at work. Do you go to work? You know, those that have to, you know, there's a lot of people have to go back to work this year coming up. They're not telling their employer, no, I'm not going in because I might get sick. No, they're valuing their time at work. No, I will be there. So a lot of people have fallen under this lie because they're not recognizing and valuing the time of, of church time. Our relationship with God. Because this is what Paul is speaking about. He is prioritizing his relationship with God. He's saying, no, this is my number one priority. I can be a tent maker. I can do all these other things. But one thing that I do is going to be my relationship with Christ Jesus. That is going to be priority. And this year I think we need to really recognize that this not coming year, we need to value what we can do for our God. And in our relationship with Christ. Are you with me? You know, I heard the, you know, people saying, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to get sick or all this other stuff. Do you know that the stores are experiencing record numbers? During this pandemic, during this, somebody's shopping. Someone's going to the store. Say Amen. Right? See, the enemy has manipulated the thinking of people to make it look like your relationship with God is not a high priority. Because we're going to risk getting sick for some gifts. When you went to the restaurant, did you take out your measuring tape? Let me make sure they're six feet apart. You wouldn't even worry about that. Come on, it's the truth. If I'm not preaching truth, stop me this morning. Because I read the numbers of the, we're hitting record numbers. It's unbelievable. So we got to break out of this lie of the enemy. That we got all this time so we could just give God just so much and that's it. So this new coming year should be, you know what, Lord? I got to value my time that I have in you. You know, I told people before, I go, look, you're not going to answer to me when you die. You're not going to answer to your wife, your husband, your kids. When you die, which we're all going to die, right? You're going to stand before an almighty God. You're going to stand before the creator of all this world. Where the earth is his foot still, his foot on the earth. And we'll give an account for our life. Why is it quiet? I just talk about going into the new year. Because this is what Paul is speaking about. His priority was, I got to do what God wants me to do. Even though he'd done a lot of things already for Christ, he was not going to let that stop him. He was not going to rest on his laurels 
the little bit of time he got left, he's already an older man here. He was going to invest that time and say, but one thing I do is I'm going to press towards the goal. He uses the word press because do you notice to do things for God, it takes a lot of ener energy and effort. You know it doesn't take much energy and effort and excitement to sit down and eat a pizza? Does anybody have to force you? Bro, Pastor Victor, you got to eat, you got to eat. But you notice for the things for God, it takes energy. It takes effort. And this is something that Paul understood. He says, I have to keep my eye on the goal, which is his high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But he says, I press. When you look up that word press in the Greek, it talks about agonizing. Because sometimes to do the things for God, you got to force yourself to do them. How many of you have been dealt with? You ever been sitting down watching a movie and all of a sudden you get the thoughts of reading your Bible? Nobody? I act like I'm going crazy. I guess I'm hearing voices. Because when it comes to doing things for God, it doesn't come as easy even though you're a Christian. Because even Paul said, the things that I want to do, I find myself not doing. It's the things that I don't want. The things that I don't want to do, I, you know, he was all mixed up. So he understood to get further in God and to keep his eyes on the goal, it was going to take a lot of energy and a lot of effort. And this year, I think we really need to put a lot of energy and effort into our time with God. Can we agree with that? To get back to that place before all this pandemic hit, that we get to back to a place where we are moving, we are growing in our life, we are reaching out to people, we're seeing loved ones come to church, we're seeing our church explode with revival. We got to get back to that place. But I got news for you. We develop a lot of bad habits. If you're honest with yourself. And can I say this and you don't get mad at me? But I'm going to say it anyway. It's my last shot because New Year's is coming. This is the old shot for the whole New Year. Now I'm going to leave you alone. Amen. See, but we get mad. If I say we, we got a little spiritually lazy, we get mad. But if you recognize the value of time, it will begin to understand. I need to move towards what God wants me to do. Do we value one minute? Do we value one second? You ever got, you ever almost got T-bone going through the intersection and they just missed you? They missed you by what? One second. Didn't you value that one second? They just missed me. Woo. And see, this is what it's all about. This next coming year, we need to get back to recognizing the value of time that we have in our relationship with God. Sad to say that many of us started off last year. We were talking about this coming into 2020. And some of them are not around no more. Not all of them are watching on live stream, believe me. Some are gone. Some have backslid. Some have went back into the world. So now that we come into this new year, say, you know what, Lord? I need to value time in my relationship with God. Because we have no problem valuing time with family. Come, you say, I got to spend time with my family. See, you have no problem with that. It's always God that gets the short end of the stick, isn't it? And this year, we got to leave all that old baggage behind. Some of us have spent too much time thinking about things that don't matter. You're still mad about an offense that happened eight months ago. You're still eating that stuff. I know we waste a lot of time on nonsense. Come on, somebody. A lot of time that we waste on just petty things. Husbands that won't talk to their wives. Wives that won't talk to their husbands. They go three, four, five, six days. That's petty. Wasting valuable time. So we got to get into this new year and say, you know what? I recognize the value of time. The one day that God gives me 
it is a blessing of God that we are above ground. I heard a man tell me, I go, how you doing, man? I'm, a, I'm above ground. I'm blessed. And I thought about that when he said that. I'm above ground. I'm blessed. So this new year coming up, let's not take old baggage of issues in our marriages, issues in relationships, whether we're family, friends, coworkers. Let's stop wasting time on those things. And understand, let's get closer to the Lord. Sometimes, how I many know we're all honest? We wasted some time on some things. Nobody? How I many know we wasted time talking about stuff? Don't act like you never talked about anything this year. Come on, man. The very family that went to your house, you talked about them too. Amen. All year we wasted time. Just talking. If you ever go to my house and all my daughters get together, oh, it's like I even tell Reuben, he's over, and I go, see what it sounds like? It sounds like a pack of hens cockling. And if you drive by my house and if we got the kitchen window open, you might think they're fighting, but they're talking. Because Ricans talk loud. But they're just talking. I can't even get a word in. Man. If you walk by, you'd be like, man, they're having a fight in there. Call the police. I should call the police one time. Go in the room and just call the police. Hey, it got a little disturbance. Come over here. But how much time, if we're all honest, have we wasted this year? And stuff that was non-productive for our life. Seriously. How much time have we wasted on the dreaded cell phone? Right here. Couples sit in bed. They don't even talk, but they're both on the phone. Sit at the dinner table getting ready to eat. How much time have we spent on this phone? Not my phone, but you know what I'm talking about. No, seriously. Think, let's be honest this, this morning before we get ready to go home. How much time have you wasted? Now I'm productive. I'm not talking about, you know, normal conversations. You got to talk to people, text people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just nonsense, just clowning. You know, laughing, carrying on. You know, just stuff that make no sense. Looking up stuff you know you can't buy. But there you are searching website after window. Open a window after window. You know you ain't going to buy it. But you're wasting time. How we do that? You ever do that? Get on the internet and someone says something. You're the, and some of you think you're the doctor. You're diagnosing yourself. Man, psh, some of you died already four times over. <laughs> diagnosing yourself on the internet. No, babe, I see it right here. I got the symptoms. Oh, my God. I got the, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? So we can all agree that God hasn't always been priority in our life. So this is what Paul is bringing to the Philippian church. This is one thing I do. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. See, this year he's talking about baggage. You ever go to the airport? You got baggage, right? See, we can't carry old baggage into the new year because what's going to happen is you're going to waste time on it because you're going to unpack it and you start dealing with it again. That's the problem with old baggage. We don't leave it in the suitcase. We unpack it. He's, and then he says something very powerful. Paul begins to talk about he is leaving behind bad things and good things. And this year, there was a whole lot of bad. Hello. Some of us know more about Dr. Fauci. We follow him more than we follow Jesus. So it's time to say, you know what, Paul says, even the good things. He's talking about past accomplishments in his relationship with God. Because some of us can get to the point, well, I did enough for God, I'm doing good, woo, 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 and then you won't do nothing else. 
So we got to leave some stuff behind. Some of the bad stuff. You guys got any bad baggage? If you don't, let me look at your cell phone. Let's do a history check on it. Let's see what you really talked about in the last six months. So can we agree there's some bad stuff in there? Because see, the problem with those things, even the good stuff, is that we'll start wasting time on those things. Because they have no future, nothing for your future. You can learn from your past and that's it. It's not going to change your future unless you take what? Action. Some of us will not press forward if we're still thinking and carrying old baggage. I remember years ago, I'm talking about years ago, not that many years, I'm not that old. Me and my wife, we, you know, we're saved, we're, we're, you know, we're like all you guys that came to church to get saved. And, you know, about four, four, three or four years into the, about three years into the, like, the journey, we get a real hard bump in the road. Hard. We had to make a decision. We couldn't get along like we should. We love the Lord, but we just weren't getting along. So we had to make a decision. So our decision was, from this day forward, we are not going to talk about the past. Do you know that that set our marriage on the right course? It took a lot of energy and effort not to get tempted and, and fall to temptation and say something again. See, that takes pressing forward. But we made that decision many years ago, about almost 30 years ago. See, that's the problem with the past, whether good or bad, is that we'll waste too much time still dwelling on those things instead of moving forward. See, this morning, you have to make a decision with your time. Are you going to still trip about old things, whether good or bad, or are you going to move forward in your life? You know, I learned a long time ago as a Christian man is that not everyone's going to like me. Do you know there's people in this congregation right now, and some of you watching me on live stream, that you don't like me? I know it's hard to believe, right, Pastor? Like, How can they not like you, Pastor? I go, I'm just a little short, chubby guy. Why can't you just look at this cuddly? Why can't you just love me? <laughs> but I've learned over the years <laughs> that that doesn't matter. But some of us can sit here and still bring old problems from 2020 concerning relationship in here or your family or friends and bring it right into 2021. And waste so much time dwelling on that stuff. Talks about the past. Whether good or bad. We all have a past. You know how they say, let leave dead dogs lie? I know some of us don't do that. That's why, do you know why social media is so popular? And why everybody's made those guys billionaires? Because they rely on the fact that you can't contain yourself. How many of us been on Facebook? <laughs> oh, hold on. That girl going. <laughs> Anybody? How much time have we wasted defending yourself? You know, people come tell me, hey, Pastor, I heard some things. They're talking bad about you. It's cool. I'm on their mind. I'm troubling them. They ain't troubling me. I'm troubling them. I'm on their mind. See, I don't let that stuff worry me because it'll rob me of my time. My priority is Christ and doing what I have to do to get closer to God and fulfill my destiny in Christ. I ain't got time to worry about that stuff. See, we can't go into 2021. And this brings me to my second point is that you cannot be held bondage to the past. Even good things. Dr. Warren Worsby said this. He was a great author, great preacher. He said this. He's no longer alive. He wrote a lot of books. He said, do not say, why are the former days better than these? 
You do not move ahead by constantly looking in the rearview mirror. The past is a rudder to guide you, not an anchor to drag you. We must learn from the past, but not live in the past. Fresh beginning. Get out of there already. Move on. Pastor, you don't know, man, that fool hurt me. Okay, he hurt you, right? Then let God heal you and move on. But you talking about that guy that he hurt you and tell all your family and friends, everyone the same old story. They're looking at you like, man, here goes the same story. It could be a, a, a brother. Oh, you don't understand. Brother and so, so mad he offended me. And you're still, it's like, really? Really? See, Paul said, I ain't being held down to the past. And he had a lot of people that hurt him. Demons forsook him. Paul was turned on. People talked about him. They even told the apostle Paul, you know the apostle Paul, you don't preach too good. Read about it. Matter of fact, you stutter a little bit. But we like Apollos because he's elegant when he preaches and teaches. Sounds so charismatic. Did that stop Paul? You don't hear about Apollos no more, do you? Who do you hear about? Paul. See, you got to make a decision. Like, I'm not going to be held down to yesterday anymore. Whatever happened in 2020, let's move on from it. Whatever it be, I'm not saying it, I'm not taking it lightly. I'm not saying it wasn't real. I didn't say really they get wounded. But I'm going to tell you something. No one can stand up in this church and say they've never been hurt in 2020. they never been wounded by somebody. they never had bad words spoken about them. Man, just shake that stuff off. I'm going into 2021, and I'm going to become the woman of God that God wants me to be. I'm going to be the man of God that God wants me to be. And if you don't like me, that's your problem. That's your issue. I'm moving on in Christ Jesus. That's what you got to do. Do you know why you defend yourself? Because you let those things bother you. That's why. When I get together with the leadership here, don't be talking about stuff that happened 10 years ago. Just stop being held bondage to the past. Some of you had inconsistencies in your relationship in 2020, right? Some of you had some missteps. Okay, now go into 2021 and don't say, well, I'm not progressing because I'm still dealing with this back. No, move on. See, what I love about God, he gives us a fresh start every day. What I love about Jesus is that when he forgives us, he cleanses us and is never brought to his memory anymore. See, that's what I love about God. See, I'm not here to please you. You're not here to please me. We're here to please Jesus Christ. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Love me or hate me, I'm not going nowhere. You're not moving me off my square. You're not moving me out of my church. You have lost your mind if you think you're going to move us out of our square. I'm going to keep on loving Jesus. Keep on loving the Lord. Keep on praising him. Keep on giving them thanks. Keep on lifting up the name of Christ. That's what we need to do. In your relationships, whether married or with people, yeah, there's been negative things. Who hasn't had negative things happen? But you can't keep dwelling on those things. Got to move on. Hello, somebody. No one here can say, They've never been hurt this year. Seriously. No one can say here, I've never been let down by someone that I care for. I've been let down by a friend. I thought they were my friends. And come to find out, they were the very ones that wounded me. Welcome to the Jesus Club. See, one thing I do and I'm trying to follow that scripture is put God first, even above my feelings. And that's what Paul said. You don't think he had feelings? He says, no, but one thing I do, I'm going to press forward. See, this year will be a time now to move forward. A fresh start. Lastly, this morning, we need to reestablish 
that priority of God in our life. I'm not saying you're backslidden. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about reestablishing. You know why? Because along the way, if we weren't so actively involved in church before the pandemic, you know how actively we were? Here's what has happened. Once we became inactive in church, you told yourself, well, I got more time to do other things. Now those other things have violated your priority in God. And it's time to get reestablish that priority of God in our life. You understand what I'm saying? That's what Paul was saying. One thing that I do. Can we say that to, honestly in, in our life this year? The one thing I did, I really put God in every decision I made. We have to reestablish that priority. And that's why it takes energy and it takes effort to reestablish that priority. You know, I told you this story before, but it's a good one. I like it. A group of friends, they went deer hunting. Dean, Dean likes hunting. I, I don't go with him because he might shoot me. Because I'm a Patriot fan and he's a, he's whatever, amen. He might be, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, pass, I shot, I hit you with some buckshot in the rear. I'm sorry, buddy. Didn't mean it. So a group of friends get together and they go deer hunting. And they were out there for two days. And then one night, one of the hunters, he came back by himself. And he's carrying this eight-point buck, this big old buck. He's carrying this deer, big one, a huge one. And they ask, hey, where's Harry? He said, well, Harry had a stroke. He's a couple miles back up the trail. You left Harry laying there and you carried the deer back? Well, he said, I figured no one's going to steal Harry. <laughs> Priority. And I think in our life, 2021, we got to reestablish our priority in God. Putting in the focal point. No longer in the rear, but in the forward position. Amen? Priority. To this Christmas, we went through another Christmas season. We were reminded again, you know, we all talk about God so loved the world. And God has given us this wonderful gift of Christ Jesus. But another thing that God has given us, he's given us eternal life. Right? But he also says, I will give you life and life more abundantly. You want things to go good in your life? And you want to live in that abundance with God? Just put him first. Reestablish that priority that, you know what? My decisions are going to be based on my relationship with God. Not on my wants and my needs, but my relationship with God. God, what do you want from my life? You know, when you put God first, he takes care of the abundance. He says he'll give it to you. Seriously, he'll give you the abundance. And this year, because of all this pandemic and all this inactivity at the church, we spend a lot of time doing other things that might have benefit your life, but your spiritual life has suffered. Hello? It might have benefit your life, but your spiritual life. You know, it's funny, like, we'll get up, well, I'm going to go work out. And you do. And you'll get up three or four in the morning for you can still go to work. God bless you for that. But then when it comes to God, it's like, oh, I can't get up in the morning and pray. See, we got to re And I don't mean this as a put down. I'm telling you what has happened over the months. Our activity in God is not where it should be. And we got to get back to that in 2021. Say, you know what? No, I'm going to get back. There's nothing wrong with doing other things. But don't let those other things rob you of your time in God. That's when it becomes a problem. The Lord says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. He says, and his righteousness in all these things will be. For every single person that's here, if you're looking for a relationship, and I don't mean to be funny, okay, so don't take this in the, no. There's nothing wrong with wanting companionship. That is a human need. Even Jesus, the Lord, when he seen Adam, what did he say? He said, it's not good for Adam to be alone. 
So there's nothing wrong with wanting human companionship. But the Lord says, you put me first and my righteousness, do things right. Honor me in your decisions and your activity and what you do outside the church. And I'll give you those things. They'll be added. Maybe something else has grabbed your time because you found out you had time because you were no longer as active, no fault of your, your own. You were no longer as active in church because of the shutdowns. But what have you done with the time? And I guarantee you, if you're honest, God has not been priority. Other things that could benefit our life have been priority. Priority. I'll leave with this final thought. I'm, I'm real observant. I go somewhere and I, even when people call me, I'll be on the phone and I'm just listening. Sometimes they'll tell me, Pastor, are you still there? I'll go, yeah, I'm listening. And I'm real observant. You know, I noticed during the holiday season, and it's a good thing, is that families get together and friends and they all get together and this one says I'm going to cook this and this one says I'm going to cook that and yeah and I'm going to bring this special you know and and you know what but one thing I noticed is all that takes extra time and love to do those things and we have no problem doing that we'll go the extra effort we'll get up a little bit earlier to put the ham in the oven because we love our family and friends that are coming over or the turkey whatever you prepare everything early. You put all the extra energy and effort. You spend all the little bit of money you had to buy someone some gifts because you love them and, and you, that's going the extra mile. You'll go without. I, I'd rather get something for the kids. I, I don't need anything. Why? Because that's love. Right? You know what I noticed? But when it comes to God, I don't know why human beings are like this. And I've been guilty of the same thing. We don't show that much drive sometimes. We just, oh, I'm just going to get up a little bit earlier so I can spend some quality time with God. But we'll do it for that ham, right? Or the turkey or the lechon. My son-in-law made a killer lechon. But we, why? Because we love one another. We love each other. And, 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 and now in the Lord... That's all Paul was saying. Read the scripture, dissect the scripture, and he says, this one thing I do, forgetting this, forgetting that, and I press towards the goal. Church, let's go into 2021 pressing towards the goal. Whatever God has for your life, press towards it. If it's companionship, it'll come to pass. Some of you are, will be pastor's wives one day. Those that desire ministry, it will happen for you. Press towards those things. Some of you are men here and you say, you know what? I want to marry a wife. Well, start preparing. I don't mean this to be funny. Do not take this. To, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to put anybody on blast. But brother, you can't take that girl to your mama's house. She got to have her own palace. You can't have two women in this man. Well, start preparing your life now. Start preparing for your life. I'm going to spend my money wisely. I'm going to establish good credit. Because when I marry my queen, I want to give her things. She deserves those things. She deserves nice things. But if you don't prepare for it, then what are you doing with your time? What are you doing with your money? You ain't giving all of it to the church. Please don't say that. You know, some people say, man, you give all your money. My mind says, tell me, all that. you give all your money to the church. Really? All my money? It's time to reestablish priority. And that's what Paul said. It's going to be agonizing. It's going to take a lot of strength, a lot of energy, and a lot of commitment to press towards the goal. So don't make a New Year's resolution. Like I said earlier, you break that in 24 hours or in a couple of days. Make a commitment this morning. So, you know, pa uh, Lord, I heard the pastor today, and I'm going to make a commitment to you, God, and get back on track. I'm not saying you're backslidden, okay? Lord, I've been investing my time in a lot of things that are only going to benefit me, but have no kingdom beneficiary, nothing. Lord, I want to get back to that place where I was seeking your will in my life. 
and you were priority in my life. Because it's because of him you have what you have. Just get back to that. I know I am. I say, Lord, forgive me. I wasted a lot of time. I did. From Christmas, the whole week, even the week before, once they put the Christmas shows on, I'm an addict. My wife will tell you, I ain't getting to bed till 2 or 3 in the morning watching Christmas movies. They all got the same plot. Dude left his job, came back, married a girl in his hometown. They were they had a prior relationship. Now they get she they 20 years later they hook up again. Now they get married. He got another job offer. Now he comes back. Now it's Merry Christmas. <laughs> but we watch it, don't we? Right? Right? You know it's the same plot. It's the same plot. Different people, different scenario, scenery, same plot. And in the end, in the end. We all know what's going to happen, right? Come then you look at your wife, come here, go, I love you so much. It just gets all in your blood. You know, you get off. Uh, man, I, I go upstairs in my room. You come, our room is up, upstairs. And I, t- I look at Connie. I look at her, and she's sleeping. I go, man, God, you blessed me. You blessed me. Well, now it's time. If you're honest, as I get ready to open this altar up, Will you reevaluate your relationship right now with God and think about the last since March to today and ask yourself, where has all my time went? Amen? And say, you know what, Lord? I'm leaving everything right here. My inconsistencies, my not reading or praying, you know, all those goofy things we tell ourselves. Lay it here at the altar and say, you know what? I'm going to 20... 21, making a commitment to God. You know, you know, Lord, I need to get back to those days where I used to listen to music in the morning when I got up. I used to sing songs. I used to worship by myself. You know what I'm talking about? We just had those times with God. And because of this goofy pandemic, it's affected a lot of things in life. A lot of us have been affected by it. But I'm being honest with you. That's why I'm going into the new year like, Lord, I just want to, I don't know if you you ever look on the, on the GPS? You, you ever have your maps on, on the phones? You ever see where it's, sometimes if it goes off a little bit, and then you can hit that button to recenter, and it puts you back to the center? That's all Paul was saying. Philippian church, it's time to get back to the center. Can we agree with that today? God bless you. Let me have every head bow, every eye closed in this church today. 2021 will be a time of getting back to the center. Might just pray on a theme for our conference that will lead us back to the center, back to the things that matter. This morning, God is good. God is a great God. And please don't take this message as I'm trying to come down on you. No, no, no. I just want you to reflect. And I threw myself in the equation because I'm just as human as you are. And I, I, I can admit there's been inconsistencies in my life this year. And maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I don't understand much. But I know one thing is that I need to recenter my life. I've been going this way, that way. I'm not in line with God at all. I've tried everything to better my life, but yet I come back to this place where I'm empty. And I want to tell you, sister, brother, that Jesus loves you. That Jesus can set you free. I'm not here to offer you a program or some magic formula to get better. I'm going to offer you a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And there's a lot of us here that we recentered our lives. We gave our life to Jesus and he put us back in the center lane. And maybe that's you. He said, you know what? I came to the church, but I need to recenter my life and put Jesus at the focal point of my life. And if that is you, he said, yes, I need Jesus Christ. As my Lord and Savior, if that is you, we lift up your hand real fast, put it back down. We will pray with you. Anybody here, quickly, before we change it, God bless you, sister. I see that hand in the back. Anybody else? Glory to God. Anybody else would join our sister? Thank you, Jesus. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I want the sister to look up at me real quick. Here, um, We're going to have one of our sisters pray with you. Uh, let me see here. One of our sisters, can you come up and pray? Lead our, oh, Sister Sarah? That's Sister Sarah, she's going to pray with you right here. God bless you today. All right, let's get back to the brothers and sisters, the Christians. This morning, at the, end, the good thing about the end of the year is we can evaluate and now we can get recentered. 
And that's all Paul was saying. He complimented the Philippian church. They're a good church. We're a good church. I didn't say we're a perfect church, but we're a good church. But if you're honest, I know you are because you love God. And I'm honest about my own relationship with God. During these last eight months, it, it was pretty easy to go off center a little bit. Pretty easy spending time doing things. I'm not talking about sinful things. I'm talking about doing things that really have no kingdom benefit at all. But now we're here this morning. We're going, getting ready to enter into this new year. And it's time to get recentered on God. And it's going to take a lot of energy. It's going to take a lot of effort. It's going to take a lot of energy and effort to break some old patterns in our life that we've established in the last six, seven months. And say, you know what? No, I need to recenter my life, Lord. I need to press towards the goal because the truth of the matter is it was Jesus Christ that saved us. It was God that reached us many years ago or six, whatever the time frame was. Think about this. It was God that reached us. It was God that saved us. And because of the inconsistencies of having church, shutting the church, not, no fault of our own, it was very easy to get laid back. You know what I'm saying? But now it's time to open up 2021, recentered on God again. Say, Lord, I need to get right back to the center and invest in the time and the effort that it takes to press towards the goal. Whatever your goal is. Whatever God spoke to your heart about. Press towards that goal. Maybe to have a better relationship with husband and wife. Press towards that goal. In Christ Jesus, God, help me be a better father, a better husband, a better wife, a better mother. Help me, Lord. I want to be a better Christian person, maybe a Christian sister, a Christian brother, a single person. I just want to be a better Christian, Lord. Let's get back to that. Recenter yourselves. And that's what's going to happen this week. It's the new year comes upon us. A lot of us will be in different homes, probably with your families, probably just your immediate family. I understand. But when 12 o'clock comes, because this year we're not doing a New Year's Eve bath, you, you know why. But I tell you, nothing can stop us. If 12 o'clock hits, man, wherever we're at, man, we begin to pray the new year in. And say, God, this can be our year. It's going to be our year, Lord. This can be breakthroughs for us. This can be, we're going to recover, God. We're going to recover people, Lord. You're going to bring in new people, God. You're going to bless our finances. You're going to bless our marriage. You're going to bless our children. Some of you are going to recover lost children. It's time to recover, isn't it? But we got to get back on track. I said, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start putting God first. No more excuses, Lord. You know, we've come up with good excuses. Not to be what we're supposed to be in God this, these last few months. But now we got to put them away. I said, no, Lord, give me the energy. Give me the strength to be that man that you want me to be or be that woman of God. How many know we can do it? All you got to do is make the choice today. Just like on your phone. I know on those iPhones, you just, it says recenter, you recenter, and the arrow goes right back to the center. All we do is got to make a choice this morning. Say, God, I want to recenter my life this morning. I want to enter the new year with a fresh start, a fresh perspective. Put back the bags of wool. last year, <laughs> this year, put, put the, take that bag and put it away. Throw it away. Put it somewhere you can't find it. I said, no, this year, Lord, I'm going to be the person that you want me to be in Christ. And have a new mentality. You can either love me or you can hate me. And I'm going to continue to be a Christian. I'm going to continue to go forward for Jesus Christ. We're open altar. You're welcome to come up. You want to pray this morning. God bless you. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, bless your God in Jesus' name. Your faithfulness stretches 
to the skies. Oh. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your justice flows like the ocean's tides. Oh. And I will lift my voice. In the shadow of your wings. Oh, let's sing it out, church. Your love, your love, oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Come on to the heavens, Jesus. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. church i got blessed with better jobs some bought uh, new homes i mean god did some good things for us in 2020 you know and he kept us through it the number one thing is he kept us you know he kept us and that's good but it's going to 2021 and let's just be excited for it re-energize yourself stir yourself back up and it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fight believe me it's gonna be a fight you know it's like spiritually we're just all tangled up in big old quilts and you got to get off that quilt. You're going to do it on a real cold day. Doesn't that quilt feel so, oh, oh, I don't want it cold. You know what I mean? And we're going to have to take a lot of energy and effort to get out of that and say, no, I'm going to go forward in my prayer life. I don't, I'm not saying you don't pray. But, you know, re-energize our devotions. Re-energize ourselves for church. Just get re-energized and say, you know what, man, I'm just going to love you, God. I'm going to go forward. I just want to love you. I, 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 what, 58 right now, I, I, am, I ain't got time to be messing around, you know. I don't want to waste time on stuff that is irrelevant. No, man, I just, Lord, whatever time I got, I want to make sure my life makes impact for your kingdom. And you're good, you're good folks. I'm proud to 
You know, I know Pastor Victor feels the same way in his wife, my wife, Brother Oscar and his wife. Let me tell you something, Brother Pastor Ruben and his wife. We're blessed. And, and, and we love you guys, and this is a good church. I didn't say a perfect church. Okay, if you're looking for a perfect church, okay, let me know when you found it. And I want the pastor's name if I can call him up. He goes, hey, your church just left the ranks of the perfect. Right when that person walked in there. And I'm going to tell you something. You'll never go to where you have to go to. And I preached this at a conference. There's going to be people in your life that drove you crazy, that hurted you, that did things to you, that, you know, just hurted you. But one day, you're going to thank them because you became who you are because of that nonsense. We don't understand that, though. Because we always want things to go good all the time. If everything went good all the time, how are we going to grow? How are you going to practice forgiveness if no one ever... Right? How are you going to preach, you know, overcoming things if you never overcome anything? And I preached at the conference. I said, hey, one of these days you're going to thank your enemies because because of them, it catapult you to where you're at today. And that's true. That's life. Let's go into 21, 2021 on fire, ready to do. And let's, man, let's kick the devil's butt. How's that sound? It's time to put the devil in his place in our life. Pastor Victor, can you dismiss us? God bless you. That's one two. I was born to walk through the fire. I was made to run through these flames.